Hey everyone, I'm Sofia Martinez. Before I dive into my story, do me a solid and hit that like button and subscribe. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this family drama. So, I'm a 22-year-old computer science major, about to graduate college. Sounds great, right? Well, let me tell you about the family circus I've been dealing with. Growing up, I was always the other child. You know, the one whose achievements somehow never quite measured up to my little brother's ability to hit a baseball. Lucas is 15, and in my parents' eyes, he might as well be the second coming of Babe Ruth. I remember when I won my first coding competition in high school. I rushed home, trophy in hand, bursting to tell my parents, Mom, Dad, I won first place! I shouted as I burst through the door. Mom barely looked up from her phone. That's nice, honey. Oh, did you hear? Lucas hit a home run at practice today. And boyfriend Jake thinks it's ridiculous. Soph, you're literally creating the future with your code. How can they not see how amazing you are? I just shrugged. I guess some parents are just hardwired to see what they want to see. My best friend Alicia is even more blunt about it. Your parents are blind, girl. You're a freaking genius and they're too busy chasing foul balls to notice. Despite everything, I still held out hope that my college graduation would be different. I mean, it's a pretty big deal, right? I even sent them a formal invitation, thinking maybe the fancy cardstock would drive home the importance. When I called to confirm they got it, Mom's response was less than enthusiastic. Oh yes, we got it. It's on the fridge. Listen, sweetie, is it an all-day thing? Lucas has a game that afternoon, and you know how important it is for us to be there. I felt my heart sink. Mom, it's my college graduation. I'm the first person in our family to get a degree. Can't Lucas miss one game? The silence on the other end was deafening. Finally, she said, We'll see what we can do. Not exactly the ringing endorsement I was hoping for. Still, I was determined to make them proud. I threw myself into my final projects staying up late coding and perfecting my portfolio. Jake would often find me passed out at my desk, drooling on my keyboard. Babe, you're pushing yourself too hard, he'd say, gently shaking me awake. I have to, I'd mumble, rubbing my eyes. Maybe if I graduate top of my class, they'll finally see me. Two days before graduation, I called home to finalize details. My stomach was in knots as the phone rang. Hey, Mom, just checking in about Saturday. What time are you guys planning to arrive? There was a pause. Then Mom's voice came through, hesitant. Oh, sweetie, about that. Something's come up. My heart sank. What do you mean? Well, Lucas has a really important game that day. It's the championship, and you know how much it means to him. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Mom, it's my college graduation. Are you seriously choosing a Little League game over that? Dad's voice suddenly chimed in. Now, Sophia, don't be selfish. Lucas needs our support. You're an adult now. You can handle this on your own. The argument that followed was explosive. I was yelling, Mom was crying, and Dad kept talking about family priorities. Family priorities? I shouted. What about me? Aren't I part of this family? Of course you are, Mom sniffled but Lucas is at a critical age. He needs us there. I hung up, my hands shaking. Jake found me an hour later, still staring at the wall. Babe, what happened? I told him everything. His face darkened with each word. That's messed up, Soph. You don't deserve this. Alicia was even more outraged when I called her. Oh, hell no. They did not just pull that crap. Their support meant everything, but it couldn't fill the hole in my chest. The next day, I overheard Lucas on the phone with his friend. Yeah, I made sure to tell Coach to schedule the game for Saturday. No way I'm sitting through Sophia's boring graduation. Plus, Mom and Dad won't even notice she's gone. I confronted him, my voice shaking. I heard you, Lucas. I know what you did. He just smirked. Took you long enough to figure it out, Brainiac. Not so smart after all, huh? I wanted to scream, to cry, to shake some sense into him. Instead, I just walked away. That night, I made a decision. I would go to graduation alone. I'd smile for pictures, shake hands with my professors, and pretend everything was fine. Are you sure? Jake asked, worry etched on his face. 
Alicia and I can be there for you. I shook my head. No, I need to do this on my own. I'm done letting them dictate how I feel. As I hung up my graduation gown, smoothing out the wrinkles, I felt a strange mix of sadness and determination. This was supposed to be my moment. And even if my family couldn't see its importance, I would. I'd walk across that stage with my head held high, knowing what I'd accomplished. But deep down, a part of me was already plotting. This betrayal, this years-long pattern of neglect and manipulation, it couldn't go unanswered. As I drifted off to sleep, my mind was already formulating a plan. They wanted to ignore me? Fine. But they were about to learn that I wasn't someone they could push aside so easily anymore. After graduation, I was done playing the good, quiet daughter. It was time to expose the truth about my family's toxic dynamics. I called Jake and Alicia for an emergency meeting at our favorite coffee shop. Guys, I need your help, I said, spreading out a notebook. We're going to gather evidence of every time my parents have thrown me under the bus for Lucas. Jake nodded, his face serious. I'm in. Where do we start? We spent weeks digging through old emails, text messages, and social media posts. Alicia even interviewed some of our high school teachers. Your old chemistry teacher said your parents never showed up for your science fair, Alicia reported. But they were at every single one of Lucas's games that season. The evidence was damning, but nothing prepared me for what I found while going through some old financial documents. Oh my God, I gasped, staring at my laptop screen. What is it? Jake asked, peering over my shoulder. They've been using my college fund to pay for Lucas's sports equipment and private coaching, I said, my voice shaking. That's why I had to take out so many loans. The betrayal cut deep. I'd worked multiple jobs throughout college, thinking my parents just couldn't afford to help. All while they were funneling money to Lucas. As we dug deeper, a disturbing pattern emerged. My grades had taken a nosedive during times when my parents' favoritism was particularly bad. I'd even sought counseling for depression during my sophomore year. Sophia, this is serious, Alicia said, her voice gentle. Their neglect has had a real impact on your mental health and academic performance. I nodded, a lump in my throat. I know. And it stops now. We found out about an upcoming family reunion and decided it was the perfect opportunity for an intervention. We prepared a presentation, complete with a timeline of incidents and their impact on me. Are you sure you want to do this? Jake asked as we rehearsed. It's going to be intense. I took a deep breath. I have to, for my own sake. The night before the reunion, I made an anonymous call to my college's financial aid office. I have reason to believe a student's college fund has been misused by their parents, I said, my heart pounding. I'd like to report it. The next day, Jake surprised me with some amazing news. Remember that tech startup I introduced you to? He said, grinning. They want to offer you a job. I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. This job meant freedom, independence from my parents' support. As we drove to the reunion, the folder of evidence on my lap, I felt a mix of nerves and determination. This was it. The moment of truth. My family was about to learn that their golden child wasn't the only one who could play hardball. You've got this, Soph, Alicia said from the back seat. I nodded, my jaw set. They have no idea what's coming. The family reunion started with a tension you could cut with a knife. I clutched my folder of evidence, heart pounding as relatives milled around, oblivious to the storm about to break. Lucas swaggered up, smirking. Hey, sis, how was that boring graduation? Bet it wasn't as exciting as my championship game. That was it. The final straw. I stood up, voice ringing out. Actually, Lucas... Let's talk about that graduation you all missed. The room fell silent. I connected my laptop to the TV and our carefully prepared presentation flickered to life. For years, I've been pushed aside. My achievements ignored in favor of Lucas's baseball games. But it goes deeper than that. I clicked through slides showing missed events, dismissive text messages, and financial records. Mom, Dad, you've been using my college fund to support Lucas's sports activities. That's why I'm drowning in student debt. 
Gasps echoed through the room. Aunt Sarah covered her mouth in shock. Grandpa's face turned stormy. Mom jumped up, flustered. Now, Sophia, you're exaggerating. We've always supported you. Really? I pulled up a chart. Here's how my grades and mental health tanked every time you chose Lucas over me. I had to seek counseling because of your neglect. Dad tried to interject. We didn't know. You didn't want to know, I cut him off. You were too busy basking in Lucas's reflected glory. Uncle Mike stood up, face red. Maria Robert, how could you do this to your own daughter? Grandma hugged me, tears in her eyes. Oh, sweetheart, we had no idea. This is unacceptable. As my parents fumbled for excuses, the doorbell rang. A woman in a suit entered, looking stern. I'm from the College Financial Aid Office. We've received a report about misuse of a student's college fund. Mom went pale. Dad started stammering about family expenses. The financial aid officer wasn't having it. This is a serious matter. There will be an investigation and potentially legal consequences. Aunt Sarah stood up, voice shaking with anger. Maria, Robert, until you make this right, you're not welcome in my home or anywhere near my family. Other relatives nodded in agreement. The united front of support overwhelmed me. Lucas tried to slink away, but Grandpa caught him by the collar. Not so fast, young man. You've got some explaining to do, too. I took a deep breath. There's one more thing. I've accepted a job with a tech startup. I'm moving out and I'm cutting ties with you, Mom and Dad. I won't be part of this toxic dynamic anymore. The silence was deafening. Then, slowly, applause started. My extended family rallied around me, offering hugs and support. As we drove away, leaving my shell-shocked parents behind, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. Six months later, I'm thriving in my new job. My apartment, shared with Alicia, is filled with laughter and free from drama. Jake and I are stronger than ever, planning a future built on mutual respect and support. My parents have tried to reach out, facing legal troubles and family estrangement. But I've held firm. Some bridges, once burned, can't be rebuilt. Last week, I received a card from Grandma. Inside was a photo of my graduation day, which Aunt Sarah had apparently attended without my knowledge. Scrawled on the back were the words, We're so proud of you. Never let anyone dim your light. As I pinned the photo to my bulletin board, next to my work achievements and pictures with true friends, I realized something profound. Family isn't just about blood. It's about who shows up, who celebrates your victories, who holds you up when you're falling. Standing up to toxic family dynamics isn't easy. It's painful, messy, and sometimes feels like tearing yourself in half. But on the other side of that pain is freedom. The freedom to be yourself, to shine without apology, and to surround yourself with people who genuinely care. My journey to self-worth was hard fought, but standing here now, I know it was worth every battle. Because I'm finally free to be me, without compromise or apology, and that, more than any degree or job title, is the greatest achievement of all. The story has come to an end. Now, I have a question for you. Was Sophia justified in publicly exposing her family's toxic behavior at the reunion? Or should she have confronted them privately first? Did the public humiliation go too far? Or was it necessary for real change? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective could help others dealing with family favoritism and neglect. If this story resonated with you and you want to hear more like it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps us continue sharing these real-life dramas and discussing important family dynamics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.